Hi guys, so today we'll be discussing in the new series that we have started about the important questions that were asked or the important uh, topics that were asked in the NEET PG exams. We will be covering those topics uh, slowly and uh, in a very brief way so that you can be prepared for INICET and this is the session on the vitamins it will be divided into two sessions so this will be the first session so uh, let's begin the lecture and before beginning the lecture I would like to request you to download my app and the apps uh, description app uh, details are given in the description and I have a wonderful course on image based discussion where I go live once a week and I will be teaching uh, you about the image based questions and the images have been taken directly from Nelson's Nelson's textbook and guy so that uh, they have very high probability of coming and being asked in the exams and there we will be discussing about those images so that uh, you can be ready and for all the image based question that comes you will be ready 100% and right now it is available at amazing discount it is currently available at 70% discount and it is available for just 300 rupees so please go and it the discount is available for two days only so I would like to request you to go to the app and subscribe to my uh, course on image based discussion if you like this video and let's begin the lecture. Hello everyone, welcome to another lecture or and today we'll discuss something about uh, you know there's vitamins. Now the vitamins lecture will be divided into two parts. One is vitamin C and B, the water soluble vitamins and then we'll do ADEK. So uh, let's begin the lecture. So vitamins part one and as you know the vitamins will begin with vitamin B1 that is thiamine. So, what is thiamine? Thiamine uh, is a uh, cofactor. It is. It works as a cofactor in several enzyme in enzymes of carbohydrate metabolism in carb metabolism. Like pyruvate dehydrogenase. Like transketolase. like alpha ketoglutarate so all these co uh, enzymes have thiamine as their cofactor and as you know that thiamine also required for synthesis of GABA and uh, GABA and acetylcholine synthesis uh, it is important for synthesis of GABA and acetylcholine so that is another mechanism that is why in thiamine response of epilepsy, uh, you know, there is abnormality in this GABA synthesis and that is why thiamine is given to the patient as the treatment. Now, thiamine is absorbed in GIT and, uh, you know, the pork and poultry and fish are good non-vegetarian dietary sources of thiamine while Vegetarian source of thiamine include rice, wheat, oats and legumes. So, sources, rice, wheat, oats and legumes are the sources of thiamine. And again, if we consider non-veg, it is pork, fish and poultry. So, these are the sources of thiamine. And thiamine is also water soluble as we know and it is heat labile. Thiamine is heat labile and most of the vitamin is, you know, lost. Most vitamin is lost or destroyed if the, uh, you know, if the rice is boiled and uh, heated and washed multiple of multiple times, then what happens is there is destruction of this vitamin. Also, there are thiamine antagonists. What are thiamine antagonists? Coffee and tea. So, thiamine antagonists are coffee and tea. These are thiamine antagonists. Uh, so, these are something basic about thiamine and then now we'll go into thiamine deficiency. So, thiamine deficiency, uh, there are few syndromes that I need you to remember. One is beriberi, one is Wernick's Korsakoff psychosis and third is Roger syndrome, Roger syndrome or Roger syndrome, whatever you might call it as. So, it is usually seen in uh, those newer food, food fads where, you know, they skip the entire uh, 
type of food or a class of food or a family of food. So food fatism is one of the growing go cause. And obviously in patients with severe acute malnutrition, there is thiamine deficiency. So first we'll discuss about ERMA. Thiamine responsive megaloblastic anemia, also known as Roger syndrome or Roger syndrome. And this is, uh, you know, there is, this is a third most common cause of megaloblastic anemia when you take in consideration of vitamins. So uh, after B12 and folic acid, the third important vitamin that causes, uh, you know, megaloblastic anemia, it is thiamine. It is an autosomal recessive disorder which is associated with megaloblastic anemia, diabetes mellitus, and sensory neural hearing loss. And this occurs due to abnormality of SLC19A2 gene. Okay. So that you have to remember. Second one is biotin and thiamine responsive basal ganglia disease. So two vitamins are involved, B5 uh, biotin and thiamine. And this are due to the mutation of SLC19A3. So there is SLC19A2 and uh, the other dependency state is SLC19A3, which presents with lethargy, poor feeding, and, you know, neurological delay. And thiamine is deficient and the basal ganglia involvement is seen. So these are the two uncommon uh, syndromes associated with thiamine deficiency. Now we'll go into common uh, the common manifestations of thiamine abnormality. So it might be, it is very, very. So very, very, as you all know, very, very is of two types. One is a dry, very, very, and one is a wet, very, very. So dry is neuritic type or neuronal type while wet is cardiac type. And here what happens is in, uh, you know, dry beriberi, -beri, there is paresthesia, burning of foot. Again, it is also seen in pentothenic acid deficiency. So burning, there is decreased DTR. There is cramping of muscles. So all this is present while in wet very very you know there might be congestive cardiac failure there is also some degree of ataxia and muscular abnormality muscle weakness and increase icp and later there might be coma but again these are very rare and long thought manifestations but still they occur with thiamine deficiency so these are the two very very types the other syndrome is a Vernix encephalopathy. Vernix encephalopathy. Now, this Vernix encephalopathy is the triad. Is the triad of mental changes, ocular signs, ocular clinical features, and ataxia. And this triad is rare in children okay this is common in adults alcoholic adults but this triad is very 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 rare or nearly non-existent in younger and infants younger children and infants and you know this is uh, not typically seen in pediatric population associated with this there might be lethargy there might be ophthalmoplegia the mental changes might also be known as global confusion and occur ophthalmoplegia. So, you know, it is called as Goa. The triad is Goa. Global confusion or mental changes O for ocular clinical features of ophthalmoplegia and A for ataxia. So, Goa is the triad of Vernix encephalopathy. Ophthalmoplegia, global confusion. There is abdominal distension. There is restlessness. So all these are commonly seen in patients, uh, 
uh, you know with vernix encephalopathy and later when it gets more and more severe there might be lactic acidosis lactic acidosis nystagmus diarrhea neuropathy neuropathy apnea and seizures so all these are the clinical features of vernix encephalopathy uh, in wet beri beri i want you to remember one thing that i forgot to tell you that uh, in wet beri beri it is usually rvh right ventricular failure is more common than lvh and that you have to remember and if you see rvh then uh, you know there might be ecg signs of prolonged qt interval and uh, you know s1 q333 the right ventricular strain pattern may also be seen okay so this is important now for the diagnosis for the diagnosis of thiamine deficiency there are two enzymes that we measured one is erythrocyte transcitolase transcitolase activity and second is thia uh, sorry thymidine thymidine pyrophosphate so these two enzymes are uh, you know measured for the deficiency of thiamine and the first one erythrocyte transcitolase is actually the investigation of choice for diagnosis of uh, you know thiamine deficiency mri might be suggestive of bilateral symmetric basal ganglia abnormality because basal ganglia is the part of brain that is commonly involved in pyridoxine deficiency and later there will be involvement of mammillary bodies thalamus and periaqueductal region if uh, it persists for a long time initially it is uh, you know bilateral symmetric basal ganglia involvement and again uh, corsak of psychosis is per se not attributed to the thiamine deficiency and it is characterized by confabulation confabulation is making up of stories uh, but it is not you know uh, attributed entirely to uh, you know thiamine deficiency it might be considered as an extension of vernix encephalopathy now parboiling of rice should be avoided uh, to you know uh, parboiling of rice should be uh, encouraged to prevent the thiamine deficiency and the treatment in thiamine deficiency is that you should give 10 mg iv thiamine daily followed by 3 mg daily for 6 weeks so this you give for 7 days here you give for 6 weeks so this is ideally the treatment of uh, you know thiamine deficiency and historically there has been no uh, reported any overdose of thiamine toxicity so i guess this is all for thiamine second we go for second is riboflavin riboflavin is a part of fad flavin adenosine dinucleotide or flavin adenine dinucleotide and it is important in the part of redox reaction it is heat stable heat stable but photosensitive and it is usually available in milk orange meat legume and mushrooms and again these are nowadays enriched and present in flours that are available uh, in the market now riboflavin deficiency or riboflavin deficiency is known by the term uh, you know arabinoflavinosis arabino flavi nosis Uh, which may be cis, which may be seen with uh, you know usage of drugs or uh, drugs that we use, which are probenecid. Probenecid, you know, is used in uh, gout to decrease uric acid. Uh, there might be phenothiazine, phenothiazine, and OCPs. The use of three drugs, these three Ps. the three p's have been associated with the deficiency of uh, you know riboflavin and rarely rarely the side chain might be uh, you know it might be destroyed or it might be present due to phototherapy 
so fourth fourth p that i have added this is a very rare mcq but one line has been given in nelson that phototherapy may lead to riboflavin destruction and later on riboflavin deficiency so 4p you have to remember as the cause of arabinoflavinosis now there is a syndrome known as bbbl or pazio londe disease pazio londe disease this actually were initially thought to be two different diseases now they have been you know uh, said to be a single disease entity and bbbl stands for brown yellow von Lier syndrome, von Lier syndrome. And this Pazio Londe or Brown Vialetto, uh, Vialetto, uh, Brown Vialetto von Lier syndrome is a neurological abnormality where there is a rapid neuro de, de, neurological uh, deterioration and peripheral neuropathy. There is hypotonia, there is hypotonia, sensory neural hearing loss, there might be optic atrophy, there might be pontobulbar palsy, pontobulbar palsy. See what happens in a BVBL is the patient suddenly comes with you with sudden neurological deterioration and it is a genetic disorder, not entire, uh, but it is associated with the uh, metabolism and the functioning of riboflavin and riboflavin has been successfully used as a treatment in, in these patients and the gene i want you to remember is slc52a2 again slc comes here <laughs> so slc52a2 and uh, you know uh, there is uh, some deficiency of riboflavin transporter proteins thought to occur in bvvl historically clinical features of riboflavin deficiency is known as chiliosis or chilitis, angular chilitis and it is associated with glossitis, keratitis, conjunctivitis and if there is conjunctivitis there might be associated photophobia, lacrimation and corneal vascularization has also been seen with vascularization has been seen with uh, riboflavin deficiency that you might have read in ophthalm. So, you know, you remember this thing. Uh, right? We also normochromic normocytic anemia in patients and there might be a smooth bald magneta tongue. There might be a smooth bald tongue where the papillae are lost and, uh, you know, some studies have found that mothers who are riboflavin deficient have a higher prevalence of having children with CHD, but it has not been uh, you know, established yet. So it has not been included in the uh, causes of CHD. A diagnosis can be done by uh, you know, erythrocyte, erythrocyte glutathione, glutathione. Reductase activity, reductase activity. This is the enzyme we measure, and the treatment of riboflavin deficiency is three to ten mg per day per oral riboflavin. Or if BVVL is present and the patient is unconscious, you cannot give all this. Then you have to give the patient IV riboflavin, which is very very difficult to procure anywhere. Okay, now. Niacin, uh, B3 is known as niacin and niacin is a part of NAD enzymes, nicotinamide, adenine, dehydrogenase enzymes and it is very important in tryptophan processing. Also, you have to remember that, uh, sorry, uh, it is formed from tryptophan. So, 60 mg tryptophan forms 1 mg of niacin. So, this conversion ratio you have to remember. Uh, niacin can be made from tryptophan and niacin is also very important in steroid synthesis, cell differentiation and DNA processing diseases. Now, the deficiency of niacin has historically been called as pellagra. Pellagra and pellagra usually occurs as 4D. We all know that it has 4Ds, dermatitis. There is presence of dermatitis, there is presence of 
diarrhea there is presence of dementia and there is presence of death now among this dermatitis is most characteristic it is symmetrical in nature and it is on the area of the sun so it is uh, you know on the sun exposed area on sun exposed area also known as castles necklace so sun exposed areas so if it is sun exposed area there is castles necklace and there is a glow and stocking pattern of dermatitis and there is presence of castles necklace there might also be presence of features like glossitis stomatitis and everything plus depression is also a part of d so we will remember that depression may also be caused in uh, pellagra and delirium may also be caused in pellagra along with dementia and disorientation is also a fourth part now there are also two associated syndromes like carcinoid syndrome if carcinoid syndrome is present there might be associated carcinoid and hartnup disease are also associated with niacin deficiency and it may lead to pellagra so you have to remember that pellagra is seen with all these features and the diagnosis is done by uh, you know which metabolites n1 methyl nicotinamide so this is the investigation of choice for diagnosis of uh, you know uh, uh, pellagra but usually the diagnosis of pellagra is done clinically because it has a very clinically uh, different clinical features plus it is very easy to recognize pellagra with dermatitis it is typical dermatitis and the tests are very very difficult to obtain so that is why the diagnosis is clinical but if you have to go for enzyme estimation this is the enzyme you have to go for how do you treat the patients you treat with a varied liberal diet with 50 to 300 mg per day of niacin mg per day of niacin and that is very very important niacin toxicity has been noted very rarely it might cause neuropathy and tingling in the chest now with this done we will go into vitamin vitamin b6 or pyridoxine now pyridoxine is a part of pyridoxine the active form of pyridoxine is pyridoxal 5 pyrophosphate and again it is available from multiple vegetables par boiling of rice or the poultry and the non vegetarian food but vitamin b6 deficiency deficiency occurs with usage of drugs like penicillamine isoniazide steroids phenytoin and carbamazepine and again at the end of the day we always have OCPs. OCPs also have, uh, you know, some amount of involvement in pyridoxine deficiency. Now, this clinical features, again, pyridoxine deficiency has very non-specific features like keliosis, glossitis, seboric dermatitis, seboric dermatitis, and uh, there might be, uh, you know, uh, it is one of the most common it is one of the most common uh, vitamin associated inborn errors of metabolism where there is a mutation of ALDH7A1 or antiquitine gene antiquitine gene which causes pyridoxine dependent epilepsy now what happens is there there are patients come to comes to you who is usually less than two year of child comes to you with complaint of status epilepticus, which is not treated by the first epilepticus, which is impossible to be treated by the first line, second line uh, anti-epileptic drug. So for all patients, pediatric patient less than two years, especially newborn who come to you with status epilepticus or a resistant epilepsy, which is resistant to the first two line of uh, anti-epilepsy, you always have to give a trial of pyridoxine in those patients because pyridoxine-dependent epilepsy 
or pyridoxine dependent status epilepticus is very common and the treatment is given by 100 mg of pyridoxine it might be given oral or it might be given iv so that you have to remember that pyridoxine dependent epilepsy is a very common cause of drug resistant epilepsy in pediatric patient and you have to know that toxicity of pyridoxine may also cause neuropathy and deficiency of pyridoxine also may cause uh, neuropathy so it is a double edged sword while it's uh, sufficiency and its insufficiency both may cause a neuropathy. The, uh, the next one is biotin. Biotin is, uh, you know, vitamin H or, uh, you know, B7. It is vitamin B7 and here only thing you have to remember that avidin, which is found in uh, raw eggs, is its antagonist. And what are the clinical features? Alopecia, dermatitis, and uh, thinning of hair. And biotidinase, biotidinase deficiency, biotidinase deficiency is a common cause, is a co common cause of an inborn error of metabolism where the patient comes to you with resistant epilepsy, resistant epilepsy. Hair fall, these colored hair, and dermatitis. So, these parts are mostly involved. And I, we have had a patient of biotidinase deficiency. So, it is important. While uh, we have studied a disease previously, just before two slides, biotin responsive, biotin and thiamine responsive basal ganglia disease. Again, it is SLC19A3 gene mutation and there is bilateral involvement of basal ganglia and it is associated with thiamine deficiency along with biotin deficiency. Now, the next two enzymes are folate and cyanocobalamin or B12. Now, this I have explained in detail in lecture of megaloblastic anemia. So, I would request you to go and watch that lecture because all forms, all inborn errors of metabolism and all diseases I have discussed regarding folate and cyanocobalamin in that chapter. So, please go and read that lecture. And the last part over here is vitamin C deficiency. Again, it is a very long uh, part because vitamin C deficiency is required for synthesis of collagen and hydroxylation, hydroxylation of lysine and proline. We require the presence of vitamin C. Also vitamin C maintains iron and copper atoms and it is also a cofactor for metalloproteinases. Metallo proteinase enzyme. So that is very important. And vitamin C, as you know, that uh, the two, uh, there are actually vitamin C, vitamin D, uh, and vitamin K are the enzyme, uh, the vitamins that are deficient in breast milk. And if the mother is deficient in uh, vitamin C, then the child may develop early onset of vitamin C deficiency and usually the children who are uh, you know fed with uh, see this is heat labile so uh, you know if you if they are fed with uh, if the children are fed with heat treated pasteurized milk heat treated pasteurized milk with absence of uh, absence of fruits fruits absence then it might lead to the presence of scurvy and the entire spectrum of bone abnormalities. So, what are the clinical features of scurvy? So, what happens is scurvy initially begins as irritability, irritability, decreased appetite, pain and tenderness in muscle. Later, this pain becomes so much that it may lead to something known as pseudo paralysis. Pseudo paralysis because there is so much pain, the child refuses to walk. That is why it might be, uh, you know, uh, confused with paralysis. So, something uh, it, it is nearly similar to paralysis. It is pseudo paralysis. 
then what happens are sub periosteal hemorrhages start to occur in patients which may mimic osteomyelitis there is no infection but it mimics osteomyelitis the pain the bone uh, growth all that is present so might be suspected that it is osteomyelitis but it is actually subperiosteal hemorrhage of vitamin c deficiency there is presence of a scorbutic scorbutic rosary where the beads are sharper compared to beads are sharper plus the angulation is also sharper compared to rat racketic rosary rosary angulation is also sharper then there is gum bleeding gum bleeding gum bleeding is historically known to be a sailor's disease and there is gum bleeding in the patient or it is a bluish spongy swelling and the you know teeth start to rot and teeth start to fall and there is presence of anemia with a uh, perifollicular hemorrhages perifollicular in hemorrhages and this is one of the hallmark of scurvy perifollicular hemorrhage where the 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 hair grows it there is hemorrhage around the perifollicular region now what are the x ray findings x ray findings in a patient of uh, scurvy so usually what happens is the bony abnormalities bony abnormalities most commonly occur at distal end usually they are seen at distal end of long bones but the most common joint is knee joint so knee joint is the most common area where you find the abnormality there is ground glass ground glass trabecular atrophy and there is pencil thin cortex pencil thin cortex of the diaphysis so pencil thin cortex is there then there is presence of white line of frankel now what is white line of frankel so white line of frankel is a irregular irregular thickened white line at metaphysis white line at metaphysis metaphysis which represents which represents well calcified cartilage well calcified cartilage so this is what a white line of frankel is now there there is a zone of rarefaction known as a tremor field zone tremor field zone this is a zone of a rare faction where there is a linear break in the bone and it is parallel to the white line it is parallel to white line of frankel so you see tremor field zone and then you see something known as a pelcan spur what is pelcan spur it is a lateral prolongation of white line of frankel and it might be seen as uh, you know at the end of the cortical ends of the bone and it might be seen as a spur so this are the findings of the uh, x ray of a patient with scurvy and usually we do not require biochemical uh, measurements of vitamin c levels to diagnose as deficiency but leukocyte concentration of vitamin c can be uh, you know taken as a marker and treatment of scurvy is 100 to 20 200 mg per day uh, it is usually given for 3 months for complete recovery in the patients and again diet should be changed in the patient because this is due to you know absence of fruits and uh, you know mineral rich or a fad type of diet and that is the reason of scurvy 
now before we go into some uh, before we go into uh, uh, you know other deficiency i would like to you know uh, tell you something about micronutrient deficiency so just i want you to remember about atp 7a stands for menke's kinky hair syndrome menke kinky hair which occurs due to copper deficiency and atp 7a is there and there is one disease known as uh, Kishan disease. Also, it has a friend known as Kashin Beck syndrome. And this is due to selenium deficiency. Selenium deficiency and there is presence of cardiomyopathy in absence of, uh, you know, all these abnormalities. Again, uh, manganese toxicity. Manganese toxicity Toxicity, toxicity may lead to Parkinsonian disease-like features, uh, while aluminium toxicity may lead to presence of Alzheimer-like clinical features. So these are some just random MCQs that I want you to remember in patient uh, in patients of uh, or in the topic of uh, vitamins. Now I guess that's all for today, and we will add different. Uh, so uh, entire spectrum of you know fat soluble vitamins in the part 2 of the lecture and i hope you to see in the next one